I'm Jeffrey Burnett. I'm one of the general surgeons here at ARMC, and today's topic is going to be gallbladder disease. Its main role is to help with the digestion of fatty foods. Now, there are a lot of days I wish that the body didn't absorb fat so well, because things that have a high fat content are probably not so good for us, but they are delicious. There is a necessity, though, to absorb some fat because some of our vitamins are fat-soluble, meaning the only way they get into us is if they're in fat. And we do need to have those. Our bodies can't make those substances. So for every 100 units of fat, there's one we need, and that's where the bile comes into play. Now, who's the poster child for gallbladder disease? Female, good room, fat fertile, and over 40. Those four things are sort of the, the four horsemen of gallbladder disease. Women seem to have far more trouble with gallbladders than men, and it's probably related to pregnancy. Pregnancy puts a tremendous stress on a woman's body, and that part is manifest by extra materials that have to be metabolized or excreted and gotten out of the body, and that goes through the gallbladder, and that allows gallstones to form. So whenever I see a woman who comes in with gallstones, I say, which of your kids gave these to you? Now, there's an unfairness in life that weight loss tends to bring on gallbladder disease and gallbladder attacks, and that just doesn't seem fair. Here you are trying to do something good, eat healthy, and eat whacked. Foods that trigger gallbladder attacks, fatty foods, that's where the gallbladder has its job in terms of digesting fat, and salads. Now that just doesn't seem fair either. A healthy food, iceberg lettuce, it seems so innocent. But for the people I see, it's the number one offensive food to bring on the attack. And I don't think it's the dressing, it's the salad itself. Now, how do you know you're having gallbladder troubles? Pain, that is by far the most common presentation. People will describe someone driving a knife up underneath their ribcage. That's pretty impressive. It tends to get your attention. But some people will have pain in their shoulder blade. Some people have pain on the top of their shoulder. Some will have pain back behind their breastbone. Not infrequently, people come in thinking they're having a heart attack, only to find out that it's just their gallbladder. Some people will only have bloating. They eat a meal, and then they feel like someone has pumped them up with air. Some people will just have diarrhea after they eat. But by far, pain is the most common presentation. It can come in waves. It comes on suddenly, it seems to pass, and then it comes back again. It can last minutes to hours, rarely longer than that. But obviously when you're in pain, minutes seem like hours and hours seem like days. <clears throat> Typically 30 to 60 minutes after you eat, if it's going to happen, that's when it's going to happen. Although nighttime is the most common time for an attack to occur. The first test is typically done as an ultrasound. Now there are a small group of people that have all the symptoms of gallbladder disease, but no stones. So if an ultrasound doesn't show stones, there's another test that's done, it's called a HIDA scan. I can't remember what the HIDA stands for. It's a nuclear test, it's a function test. It says how does your gallbladder work? Not what does it look like, but how does it work? And for some people, that will help elucidate or show where is this pain coming from. And there are three options. The first option is don't do things that aggravate it. Sort of common sense. If certain foods trigger the pain, don't eat them. So dietary modification is something I tell everybody about, but it doesn't happen very often. People ask, well, isn't there a pill I can take? Can we dissolve the stone? And the answer is yes and no. And I'm not a politician. It's yes if you've just had a baby and this is your first attack because those stones are so new that they can be dissolved. But within five years of stopping the medication, the stones will be back. Now they may be painless, but they're back. And they have the potential to act up again. So medication is an option for most people. But surgery by far is the most common way that people deal with gallstones that are troublesome. What kind of surgery? The key is, is that it's done with a laparoscope. Laparoscope means to look inside the belly with a 
long tube. So instead of having a big cut, you talk about four small incisions, two half inch, two quarter inch, and removing the gallbladder that way. Laparoscopic surgery has been a tremendous advance. It has cut the recovery time down from weeks to days. It has allowed people to get back to work, back to their activities quicker. So it's safely done about 99 times out of 100. I would say about once every other year, I have somebody who we decide that a cut is going to be the right way to do it. But most people are going to have the laparoscopic procedure, which is great. You come in, you get it done, you get to go home. Now, for those people that have to have what we call open surgery or the big cut, you're going to be in the hospital two or three days usually. Your return to work is probably going to be stretched out two to four weeks if you're doing very strenuous heavy labor or if you're working in the police department, firemen, EMS, it's going to be a little bit longer. So it's a good thing to avoid if you can. Now what's the chance that getting these gallstones out is going to keep the pain from coming back? About 98 out of 100. For medicine, that's pretty good. If I had 100 people, 98 are going to be happy. One out of 100 are going to be going, hmm, wonder why I did this. And about one out of 100 is going to have a legitimate gripe about things. That's a rare occurrence. It happens about one in 500 times. It happens to you. You don't kind of care what the frequency is because it's happened. But that's one common, one very uncommon problem. Can stones come back? Yes. Stones typically can come back 20 or 30 years after the fact, but it is very, very uncommon. And again, I've been here 26 years, and I can't think of anybody off the top of my head who's had a late stone recurrence. Uh, if we find patients have stones in the main plumbing channel, they will typically be managed by uh, a procedure before surgery called ERCP. It's where they go down through the mouth, through the stomach, get to the bottom of the bile tube where it empties into the intestines. They pop it open and get the stones out. And then the person will go on and have all that surgery after that. How the gallbladder works and exactly where it was located, Dr. Burnett was very informative. And he made it he put it down in layman's language that we could understand.